Hey everybody, um, John here, I'm Poppy, and um, this is a video for my orchid haul from Paris, from the Paris show, the orchid expo that I went to two weeks ago. All right, um, there's quite a few. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But all right, so let's get started. Um, okay, so first I'll show you, okay, from Roki, I got, um, first of all, the show was great. Um, I'm sure you've seen the, probably seen the video already. Um, yeah, it was, it was big. There were a lot of vendors. It was, um, it was just really beautifully decorated. Like all the stands were very, like you know, they were very well done and, and very well presented. And uh, and I went all three days. Especially you gotta go to the last day because the last days when, especially like the later it gets in the day, then like you know the discounts start. Um, you know, two for whatever or like. Um, ten percent off, and then like by the time it's like two hours left of the show, then everyone's like, you know, buy one get one free. Um, you know, forty percent off, blah, 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 and that's when you get the real deals of, of whatever on um, whatever's left, which isn't much. But okay, so um, this one is already it was in bloom when I bought it, like in full bloom. So like by now it's been like yeah, it's been two weeks already, and the flowers are already like spent. This is a Sideria japonica from um, Rolke. Uh, it's a nice healthy plant, and it had two spikes. Um, with that lemony kind of, um, but like a fake kind of lemon smell. It almost reminds me of like the lemon deodorizer that they use in like urinals, like in the bathroom, like a like a lemon, bathroom lemon deodorizer smell, like a not a, like a pleasant like lemon pledge or like a, a you know dishwasher soap or something like that. No, it's it smells like those little the things that they put in the urinal you know, in the men's bathrooms. But whatever, at least it's like you know it's fragrant, it's citrus. Um, and also from Roki, I got this Labia Preparata Varflamea, um, which has already bloomed. The, like I spent the sheet there. And um, this is a new growth. One of them is a little bit wobbly. This, this one right here, it's kind of a little bit, so I have it like um, staked a little bit. I mean like being held up by the other one, but overall it's a very healthy plant. And um, it's, it's in its original media still. I didn't want to touch it because it's not really growing any new roots or growths yet. So I don't want to just, you know, repot it now when I could possibly set it back. So, okay. Then, uh, I got this uh, from, this was, well, the stand said Orchid for you. Or I think so, Orchid like for you. But uh, the tag is from Schroeder. And I heard like, mm, there are lots, a couple small nurseries that get their plants from shorter. So um, this is the Phalaenopsis Macassar, which is Embuenensis White by Marie, which I had originally gotten a few years ago from uh, Orchid Garden in Poland. But, um, what was it? Last year I had a bad, like, mealybug break out on that plant, and I, like, I didn't catch it so late, because I wasn't, hadn't even been looking for it, really. And since the, the, the blooms are, like, red and white, I didn't even see the, the, the freaking mealybugs until it was like the plant was like completely like every flower on the back side of it completely infested and when I you know I tried cleaning it off and getting out done potting thing but by then it was just like it just seemed the plant never bounced back it two of the spikes like dried up and then like you know the leaves weren't coming out well and it just yeah I had let it go too long and I had without even having noticed it but now I got this one but this seems like two plants which I think it is I think it were two little plants that are probably growing together and they left them like that um, but yeah so it's already got two flower spikes and um, the one I had before I had five but yeah I'm sure that this is this makes a very nice display I love these blooms I love the, the big leaves so nice oh well this was up here so like so just put it back up here I've taken them all down the ones that I purchased from the show so it'll be easier and more you know time less time consuming okay then from, this is a Peruvian vendor, uh, Orchideas, Orchideas Amazonicas, okay, from Peru. This is the Rodriguezia Bait Manii. Um, I put this one right into semi-hydro. <laughs> She's going to bite it. Um, and it seems to have, like, you know, sometimes it's funny, with the semi-hydro, occasionally you'll get, like, you, something that you pot it, plant it, pot it up in there, and it takes, like, that, like, Instantly, like these leaves, like perked up. They get they're shiny. The it seems like you know this new growth here, like perked up. It's it took to it like right away. Again, well, I have them obviously on my heating pad, the heating mat, well, all the nutrients first. But um, yeah. So 
my fingers crossed, I think this one will be all right. Roger Gizzi and Peyton Manny Eye. Then, um, let's see. Oh, I put in a pre-order with uh, Equigenera that they brought to the show, and I just picked it up at the show. Um, this was, I had to order this one, or which was this one I ordered? Uh, okay, no. Well, this one I, I got, I bought there, and I had an, uh, another three. Was it that I, I had? Yeah, another three. That three I had pre-ordered, and this one I picked up there. This is an Oncidium Navium, which I think used to be Odonta Blossom Navium, which I love with. Uh, the blooms are insane. The white with the, the orange or red it is. They're, they're beautiful. And um, I, so then I can't find, I haven't been able to find an Odonta Blossom Navium, or one that's like in, in decent, you know, this is the best one I've seen in a while because most of the most of what you see on eBay or on, on if, if other vendors have it, it's like one bulb or like, you know, maybe one bulb with a tiny little new growth, but it's kind of shriveled and not really. This one, like you see the bulbs are like plump, fat. Another one that took well to the semi-hydro like instantly. Look at the new growths that have come up and like very healthily. Because <laughs> this one was starting to come up and then this, this one was already up. And, but it came out more, this one came out, and then and this one like perked up. The one that was like, so I'm kind of eh, when I, when I had it, because, you know, the uh, Equigenera sells them bare root. So God knows how long they've been like that until before you get it home. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this will, I'll have luck with this one. This is uh, Oncidium Navium. Very similar was one I had actually ordered from them on the pre-order. It was an Odontoblossum Navium by o Oh, Danto Blossom and Dredde, and Dredde, and Dredde, oh. This is what I pre-ordered from them, and this is also very similar to those flowers, to the navy, it's, but it's a little bit different because of the, it's got another Danto Blossom cross with it. But uh, again, nice plump bulbs, healthy. Uh, we've got like three, four, and um, New growth coming out here, and one down here. So, okay. I'll put pictures for everything at the end. It's just easier than just you know every time I show you one, I'll just show you the picture. And at the end, I'll just do like a quick slideshow of all the of all the all the blooms. Um, also from uh, Equigenera, another one I had pre-ordered. This is the Miltonia. Phymetokyla, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, an interesting one, uh, yeah. It's got more leathery leaves, almost, almost like Psychopsis, but not that leathery. Um, and yeah, as the new bulb is coming up. See? And uh, yeah, the blooms on this are pretty cool, actually. They look Oncidium-ish, but you'll see that they're really cool. And last from Equigenera. Just dripping dry. Um, a Stanhopia cross. It's Stanhopia nigrovialacea by Grandiflora by Stanhopia saccata by Insignis foram. Um, I guess one of their creations. Um, nice, a Stanhopia. I, I put it into a small basket. Um, broke up some of the bottom um, netting, like, because it's more finely, I guess it's more like a fine weave basket, if you want to say, it, beneath. And just to make sure like the, the blooms can get out, the spikes, I, I broke up some, like, you know, joined like two or three at, at a time in bunches. So like, it's got more open space to come out. But, you know, judging by the way the other ones grow, I mean, the, it'll push through the plastic and break it, like, no problem. <laughs> like, look at this one here. This broke through, I don't know if you can see it. The side thing, and I didn't even, I didn't even make a, I didn't even help it. Two bulbs came bursting through. They, they're just like, you know, they're strong. So, if they need extra room, I'm sure it'll, it'll push out, and no, no problem. Also, I asked um, why, because I still have never gotten into staying healthy in the bloom yet. Um, and one woman told me, uh, plant, you have to give them a lot. They're, they're huge feeders. Like, fertilize them, like, you know, like as much as you can. So when I repotted this one into here, I put some um, time release, the Osmocote. Um, 
you know, and I, I wasn't worried. I'm not worried if it, like I said, I had those the same problem last year, but my a couple of my kind of see them as Danny did. Uh, I uh, ended up burning, it was too much for the, and, well, actually having them in semi hydro, I think was the problem with the, some, with the slow release. Is that maybe like released it at more quickly or more concentrated in one spot or some, sh whatever it was, um, it didn't do so well for me either in semi hydro with the catacetums. But um, this year I repotted a lot of the catacetums, I potted them up into uh, sphagnum. Ones that are more already in, you know, that I've gotten acquired like this past season. So they were already in uh, Bark and Sphagnum, so I just, you know, repotted them into that to see because I don't really, uh, most of them, uh, the ones I've had that bloomed or, or that I have as adults are in semi hydro. So I want to see how it takes, how they grow for me in, uh, in Bark and, and just getting antsy, in the Bark and uh, Sphagnum to see if, if maybe they'll, you know, they'll do a thrive a little more. And if, if that's the case, then I'll grow them, I'll switch them over to that. Because it's not about like having everything in semi-hydro just that because I grow semi-hydro, no. There's a lot of things that I've, I've realized that I'm, I, to grow better for me in other media or in, in organic media or in, in just moss or in, in bark and moss or whatever. Because, yeah, there's no, as with, with, with most of the rules in, in, when it comes to orchids, there's, there's never really one set thing that goes for all of them. Um... This is always the exceptions, there's always, you know, and things that vary and, and you, know, you just have to work accordingly. Just go and see what works, what doesn't, and, and, and make adjustments. So, um, yeah, so I have, like I said, I have a lot that are, that are still embarking and sphagnum. For example, my renantos. I went through so many renantos and that just did not survive for me, be it bare root, bare root hanging like vans, they didn't survive. Potted in, um, in I tried in the semi hydro, didn't, they didn't take for me. Um, just, I, I just kept losing one after another after another. Case in point, well, this one right here, my Renanthopsis, Mildred Jameson Bonsell, the one that bloomed for me in, uh, what was it, about a month ago, or the two months ago. Um, Danny also uh, mentioned that she's, hers was, you know, not doing so well. Bumblebee, I remembered a couple of when I bought this, I watched a video of hers on it that, she had lost a bunch of leaves and thought she was going to lose it, but then it stopped, and then they would like you know start to grow back. This thing, same thing. I don't know. After the after it finished blooming, the leaves you see like this, like they would turn. Yeah, it almost looks like a I guess that fungal. It looks like fungal when they have like the spotty kind of you know blemishes, um, or um, it could be a deficiency of something. I don't know, but this one I since it's been all around the board like. It, other people that are, you know, the other people that I know that have it, have also had the same issues. It could be, could be something else, maybe related to the cross, or I don't know. But it just, and I water it regularly, like regularly, like a dunk dun, dun it like a dunk on the vandas, and it's the, the root chips have stopped growing. They, they, they kind of dried out. A lot of the top leaves have, have came out. See, I think Danny's still got her top leaves like when the new ones come out i lost like that the top ones a couple of bottom ones i'm left with three little leaves i don't think this is going to make it but you know i just i tend to think that this is something more than the way i'm treating it that's causing this since it's happened to the other two people that i have it so i don't know we'll see hopefully it'll make them come back and we'll see those pretty blooms again okay off track, back things back on track with the, the hall. Okay, then I got from this Chinese vendor, I got, I got a couple from them actually. Finally, Ornanthro Monochica in bloom. I've never had one of these in bloom, I've only seen them. I've, I've gone through probably like five or six already. I have another one over here that I got at in Malvern last June, which is actually doing okay. Also in bark, I left in bark and sphagnum moss. There's this nice big root coming out at the bottom. So this one, and it seems to enjoy the, the bark of the sphagnum and like mostly staying moist. Um, check this out, these blooms are gorgeous, gorgeous. I think this is one of my favorite uh, blooms so far. It's the Renanthra Monachica, or Danny's Mon Mon Monachica. I don't know how, to, how you pronounce it, but I would just figure it was Monachica. The, the nursery is Yin Cheng Orchids. Oh, Ye, ye, ching or, ye Cheng Orchids, that's it, yeah. Which, coincidentally, when I got back from uh, Paris the next weekend, which was um, Easter weekend, 
there was my um, Orchid Society's show that they have um, always the week of Easter. It's like a four day show. And the same, this vendor was there also, and, and she had more of these more, the Monochica she had. The other ones I got the Jobriums, everything kind of, everything in, in like bud and, and bloom. But I always, I don't know, I, I, maybe it's just, I don't know. I just, I'm not saying this, not stereotypical. Oh, all right. Uh, but um, I always get the feeling that they're, but they're all the, because all the, to have all the th things that they have that are in bloom, and a lot of them are small, like they look like kind of small for the, to be that, you know, blooming so well. I, I always think that they cheat and like, you know, they give them like hormones and stuff like to try and make them bloom sooner and bloom faster and then it's not really like, like after this blooms, let's see if it'll get a, be on a regular blooming cycle or if this thing's gonna have to get, well, although this is a, this is blooming size for Mona Chica. Um, they don't, have, they don't get like that big, they don't have to be like Vanda size to bloom. But I mean like, I don't know. I just thought that, I don't know. Not, I could just be wrong, but I would just feel like sometimes you see them and they're, they're really tiny and they're blooming and I'm just like, this was so forced, but what are you going to do? It's nice to have the blooms though, I'm not going to complain. So, um, yeah, Renata Ramona Chica, and then I also got, um, now this was in bud when I got it, when I brought it, but it, it bloomed, it, the blooms up in here, although I lost about four buds, they blasted in, on a trip and like, yeah, I mounted it. And, Dendrobium Nestor. Oh, I love the smell of these blooms. It's like blueberry. It's like blue. It's like a blueberry raspberry. Oh, I love it. Um, but yeah, again, this has been open like two weeks. This first one's starting to go, but gorgeous. Really, really beautiful and nice and healthy. Look at all these new growths come. Growths coming out. I got one, two, three, four. Four canes like actively growing, which is pretty good. So, yay. The Jovium Nestor. Um, I also got... Oh, this one. Because this one, this thing over here, destroyed my, my frosty, you know, my, um, what was it? Don, Don Marie. It was this one, this thing. Don Marie last year that I got from the RHS show. So I got it again. Um, in, in bud. And it's actually starting to open. One bloom is starting to open. These are beautiful with like the orange, like fuzzy lip. Actually, the whole the whole, the canes are fuzzy also. They have like like little tiny. I don't know if you can see this. Little tiny black hairs. It seems all up and down the cane. And um. Yeah, so this one I'm psyched to have this one again. Eyes off it. <laughs> and um. Um. Yeah, the Jobim Don Marie. Um, then we have from, oh, also from the same, the Yiching Orchids, um, Catlia Green Emerald Orchid Queen. Right here. Very nice. It was in bud when I bought it. I'm really smiling. Um, it was bud when I bought it and, um, it opened once I got home. This year... This year, <laughs> uh, when I travel back with them, I did have most of them in my suitcase. Then I got check my checked in luggage, but the ones that were in bud um, or in bloom already, I like the the Sideria japonica. This one, um, no, the Nestor went in because it was just uh, that one went in my suitcase. But like then, oh, and another one I had in bloom for for my friend that was taking care of Poppy and, and the plants. Um, they all went in my carry on. So I had to carry my backpack with my carry-on. I had with four, like four, four with orchids in there in bloom. And they, they stay much better than if I would have put them underneath. Because I know they would have, I would have lost the bloom sooner. Someone would have blasted and yeah. So um, yeah, I think from now on, I already booked Malvern in June. I'll do the same thing. Anything fragile or in bud or in spike or whatever will come on my carry-on and the rest can go in the, in the check luggage. But okay, C Catlia, Emerald, Orchid Queen. Green Emerald Orchid Queen. I think this is now this is one more. Oh, wait, no. Ooh. <laughs> right, this, this. Oh, I got this one also then from a Chinese vendor. Was it the same one? No, there's no name on this. They were selling, they just had like a, a bin of like full of like 
they did like 10, 10 euros a piece, so like whatever it was, it was just like a mixed bag of like everything. Ow. Oh, my nails digging into my collarbone. Ugh. Um, so I got another, this is a Denjobium Nestor also. I figured for 10 euros, why not? It's cute. Denjobium Nestor, nine dragons. And it's got two little growths coming out here. So I figured, yeah, I can't go wrong. For 10 euros, why not? And this looks like a little, it's a nice plump cane. Uh, so we'll see. Plus there's something coming out at the base there as well. There's a little green, I don't know if you can see if they'll focus, but there's a little green speck right there. The Joby, I mean, um, yeah, the Joby Master of Nine Dragons. And, um, oh, there's this one I got from the vendor I got, the French vendor. He's got good quality plants. Um, Vechereau and Le Couf. Dendrobium Noritobanaga. Finally getting one, like, in, like, you know, beautiful conditions and conditions. Like, this is a nice, healthy, green, like, vigorous, blooming example. Because um, I had gotten two others, like, that were, like, just a little older than the seedling size. And um, they're just like struggling. And I think one of those over there somewhere, I think. Um, but no, it's, you know, I, I, flowering size, adult. This is like, the, this is the, the, the age and, and size that I like to get my plants, basically. Um, ooh, what's this? The, the mealy bugs, motherfuckers. Son of a bitch. There's only two, like, in, in, see, look at this leaf cross. Right in there, there's some of the bitches. I can see them right in there, motherfuckers. Oh, I can't stand them. Oh, I'll get a Q-tip and get rid of those, like, you know, out of alcohol. Um, what are you gonna do? Those are the first ones I've seen. Um, and I'm gonna nip that at the bud. No pun intended. Okay, but the Jogun Nora Tokunaga, beautiful, love the blooms, spots on the back, and real cute. Okay. And last but not least, the Pièce de Résistance. This was a purchase that I was not expecting. And, uh, let's see. And very appropriate with like, you know, the timing. Considering all, you know, what's been the topic conversation on YouTube lately. This was from N NT Orchids. And this, Dimorphicus Lowei. Can you believe it? Oh, I said, sorry, Poppy. I, when I saw this and I gagged. I was like, when I read the tag, I was just like, what? And guess how much? 100 euros. Like, I would have been, that would have been a steal. Oh, wait. Oops, sorry, boss. That would have been a steal not to, if I didn't buy this, that would have been a, like, a, uh, a big mistake. Because, I mean, how could you turn that down? It was bare root when I um, was, like, flat, like, you know, they had, like, a line flat on a table, like, bare root with, like, a little sphagnum moss um, attached to it. But... Um, so I potted it as soon as I got back. It had two live root tips down in the bottom in the pot. And ended up being the pot. Because I was like, what do I do with this? Do I pot it? Like, how should I pot it? Should I, should I, like, big airy, which I figured, like, chunky bark, big chunky bark, no sphagnum moss. Um, and just, you know, just water it frequently because until, like, the, the, uh, until the bark starts to, like, absorb the water. Because otherwise, you know, it need, and plus it needs a little rehydration. I actually left it soaking for, like, about an hour or two when I first got back home, but, um, and I don't know if this was from the trip or from like the, I don't know how long it has been bare root, had been bare root before I got it, but it lost two leaves. There was a leaf in here, and there was a leaf over here. When I got back, like about a week, you know, a week after I got back, they were, it just, they turned yellow and then like dry brown, and that was it, which, so I knew, it didn't look like a virus or anything because there was no spotting, there was no, there wasn't like any brownie or anything, I mean any like, like like rot, black rot or anything like that. It was just, it just seemed like either, now this is one that I had to go in my suitcase, obviously, there was no way I was carrying this on, the, on, on my carry-on. 
but so I thought maybe the cold maybe had gotten to it or uh, I don't know. But luckily, it was just those two, only those two leaves, and um, and it's it doesn't seem to have progressed at all. This was about a week ago when I, when I took those two off. So um, yeah, this at home. If you go on that, what is that orchid web? That's uh, that site that sells one this size. It probably run you. Um, Anywhere from eight hundred to a thousand dollars, easily, because they sell one. I think that one of the biggest ones that they actually carry, it's like a full, an adult size, a flowering size, but not in spike or in bloom for like two thousand dollars, or three thousand dollars. So yeah, this would easily be eight hundred to a thousand because this has got to be like, it's got to be at least five or six years old. I, I think, compared to the ones that we that I have, we have. I mean, for that little one to get to this size, it's going to be like quite a few years. So, uh, for 100 euros, it was worth a shot. Even if it doesn't, if I, you know, if it doesn't live for me or it doesn't, whatever, um, it was worth it, the 100 dollars. Because if it does, boy, is this a jump start, a head start. Um, but again, you know, this is you know, I'm, I, I really, I was, I wasn't, I'm getting my whole, I wasn't getting my hopes up that this was like gonna, like you know, thrive and like. Do well. I hope it does, but you know, it, it's you never know because there's so little information about this plant online because so few people have it, and and there's not really even like in forums and stuff. Um, there's not a lot of information on it, so I really don't know, you know, the, the success rate and like you know exact you know care instructions and stuff like that. But that's it. Well, that's that's what the hobby's all about. No learning and and trial and error. So, we'll hope for the best, and, um, but yeah, it was definitely, I got this and I was like, wow, I was, this is my, this is the, the purchase of all purchases for the weekend. Um, yeah. Dimorphicus lowei. <laughs> okay, so, that was my orchid haul from the Paris show. Um, and then when I got back from, actually, when I told you, when I got back the next weekend, was the, my Orchid Society's orchid show, and I ended up buying... I got maybe like four or five more from them. Um, I got, just quickly, I got this, which the blooms already came off. It was the, uh, the Epicatlia Renee Marquez Flamethrower. This one right here, which I threw into semi hydro. I found uh, Catlia Rex, which I had, I had seen at the Paris show uh, the first, because I got there the first day. When I got there Friday, uh, it was a Friday morning. Um, my original plan was to go back to the hotel, shower, whatever, and then go to the to the show. I, you know, I didn't want to just fly in and go right from the airport or something. Um, so, but it turns out my room wasn't ready, so I had like three hours to kill, and I was like, "What the hell am I gonna do?" And it's just starting to drizzle and rain out, and I'm like, "Fuck it!" I was walking distance from the show. That's purposely where I got the hotel because I was like literally three blocks from the sh from the show. So, so I went, and my you know I'd done my that's when I got the phalaenopsis, and I was just doing like a walk around, and. Um, I saw it was a one this one vendor that had the the, uh, the La, um, the Amazonica that one that I got the the Peruvian one where I got the um the bait manii Rodrigesia. Uh she had three um three Catlia Rexes but one two of them went for for, for forty five and one was for like thirty five or twenty five but each of them had like something on that was just not first the whole thing about having it like bare root. It, you know, I've had experiences I've lost, like a couple of from Equigenera that I got last year, the Lady of Purple Riders. Two of them didn't, you know, they, they just didn't take for me. Um, so I didn't want to risk, you know, it was, actually it was more, I think it was 60, it was 60, 60, and 45. Um, uh, they, I didn't want to spend that much and then, you know, just not to be sure and like, you know, I wasn't like dying for it. So I was thinking about it and so, the, but when I got back to the hotel, I was like, you know what, I, I really should go pick up one of those, why not? And of course, I went back the next day, and all three were sold out. I was like, "Damn it!" But when I got so when I got to my orchid society show, this Peruvian, another Peruvian vendor, she had them, had one. She had two, and so I, I got one. Oh, it's over here. And it broke when I was repotting it. Actually, well, it broke. It separated. I broke the rhizome broke. So the little piece that came off, I put into semi hydro, and the other one I planted up in bark. I was like, "Let me get this Catlia." You know, Catlia Rex is fierce. So if I, I don't, I want to see if I could really, you know, that's not one I want to experiment with, but um, this is the main plant, and then this this came, had broken off. Which, I mean, it's it's got one, two little bulbs, 
three little bulbs, and it's, and it's, you know, we'll see, we'll see if it puts out a new growth. Um, this one I put in the semi hydro, and then, yeah, like I said, this was the one with the main part of the plant and bark. And, um, what else did I get there? I've gotten the. I got a. I got the Cattleyas, I got the. Um, I mean, the Cattleya, I got the. Um, the Rene Marcus Flamethrower. Oh, I got a Dendrobium. Uh, get this name right. Uh, Dendrobium Trent Twenty. A little small, cute. So I figured I'd mount it up and and it'd probably do well in here. Dendrobium Trent Twenty. A and um. Oh, I got a, uh, yeah, well, in spite, I got it already in bloom. Just because I didn't want to get this at the parish show and have to travel back with it since I knew my show was coming up. Um, you know, good old Nelly Eiler. Nice, but another spike. Hmm. So let's see how to look at that one. Let's see get the show here. Um, I got something else. Um, hmm. <laughs> Maybe that was it. No, but I spent like a hundred and something. No, I know I got something else. I had to have. Ow, puppy. Ow, my neck. Um, oh, well, if I think of it, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you in the next one. But, yeah, so so those were my hauls from uh, from Paris and then from my Barcelona show. And, um, yeah, so I guess that's about it. I'll check these out. I made these last night. Because... Actually, a, a YouTuber, a fellow Orchid YouTuber, um, sent me an email yesterday that they're coming to Barcelona. Um, I think, no, actually, they, they're outside of Barcelona um, today, and they'll be here till Wednesday. So we're going to meet up, and for the occasion, I decided to make cinnamon rolls, cinnamon buns. Yeah. Mm. I couldn't resist. I had one this morning. But, oh, my God. My whole house smelled like cinnamon this morning. I was like, that smells amazing. Um... So you'll see who that is. It's a surprise. The YouTuber is coming to see me. Um, and that's it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, give it a like, share, subscribe, leave a comment below. Um, and uh, I will see you very soon for um, well, what's in bloom. I have a couple of things in spike right now, another one in bloom. So I'll do a quick little video of that later in the month. And, um, and then, yeah, next show. Uh, in the, yeah, on the horizon is Malvern, right? <laughs> in uh, the middle of June, I think it's the 14th to the 17th. So, um, psyched. Um, all right, have a great day, everybody. Spring is definitely sprung, nice, finally. And um, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.